So give me a uh, Ciroc. Uh, give me Ciroc twenty eight, verse one. Ciroc twenty eight one. This is the book of Ciroc, chapter twenty eight, verse one. Come on. He that revenges, revengeth, shall find vengeance from the Lord. Uh huh. And he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Uh huh. Forgive thy neighbor. It said, he that revenged shall find vengeance from the Lord, and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Now, of course, the revenge is you, you going back and, and doing the revenge. But think about it in a, in a relationship. Something happened. The brother is trying to get over it. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, or maybe, maybe let's say porn, for instance, right? Say, for instance, your husband watched porn, and... You know about it, and he's sorry. He repented from it, and you're talking about this months back, and he's trying to get over it. He's trying to do more things, be more intimate, trying to get over that demon. But then again, you won't even forgive him for that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's trying to get over it. He ain't watching it no more. He's trying to get forgive it. But then again, you're still pushing him back because of that happened. You're going to ruin your relationship. Right. You're gonna take. You, he's gonna go right back to that because now you pushing him away. Not saying it ain't good at all to do that. All right, the porn thing. I'm saying, but stuff happens. It happens. All right. I'm just giving a scenario. Y'all gotta learn how to forgive. All right. You have to learn how to forgive in this truth. How can you forgive other people in the world like we mentioned earlier? People that probably didn't been raped. People have been beat up, been abused, molested, all of these things, right? And you can forgive those. Somebody that stole from you, stabbed you in your back. <laughs> you know, you can forgive them people. Right. Especially on Day of Atonement. Oh, you want to forgive everybody, huh? Right. But then again, you can't forgive your spouse. Right. The person that you that you deal with every day. Trials and tribulations, burden children. Right? Y'all going, you know, y'all go to Passover together, tabernacles, y'all everywhere together. But then again, deep down, one of y'all got a hatred for the other person. And y'all can never get anywhere like that. It'll right. never be the same if you hold that grudge right. against your spouse. You got to learn how to forgive your spouse and move forward. A lot of times y'all be worried about the stuff that happened in the past. And it come and it's and you're the one that's bringing it up to the future. Right. You're the one keeping that the relationship at bay because you're doing what you keep bringing up old ish. Right. Stop doing that. You're destroying your relationship. Move forward. Move on. Move on. Let's build together. Let's let's get stronger. Let's 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 take it to the next level. Let's move forward. Let's do big things with each other. Let's not worry about what happened back in the day. Right. We all want to be forgiven by God, right? We've all did some screwed up stuff in the world. But guess what? We want God to forgive us, but we can't forgive our own spouse. That's crazy. Let's read on. Verse 2. Uh-huh. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he had done unto thee. Uh-huh. So shall thy sins also be be forgiven when thou prayest. Because if you forgive your brother, you, your sins will be your sins will be forgiven. Same thing for your wife. You forgive your wife for what she's done. I'm not talking about like she cheated or nothing. Like, but you forgive your wife. She might have said something crazy or whatever the case may be. She ain't doing duties, but she's trying to get herself together. You can forgive her, all right? Forgive her for that. But guess what? The Most High God gonna deal with you the same way. Right. We all ask for mercy. We all ask for mercy. We all want mercy. But then again, when it comes to you giving mercy, you don't know how to give it. You don't know how to give it. Come on. One man beareth hatred against another. One man beareth hatred one for another. Come on. And doth he seek pardon from the Lord? But he won't pardon from the Lord. He wants the most high God to be on his side. But you got hatred for your brother. Same for y'all in y'all marriages. You got hatred for your husband or you got hatred for your wife. That is a problem. But then again, you asking God to give you uh, 
to give you a break financially. Right. You want God to give you a house. You want God to give you all this materialistic stuff to make sure things is going right. But then again, you hate your spouse. It ain't going to happen. Some of y'all be, be held back because of that. And you be wondering why y'all be getting jacked up. Because y'all not right in a relationship. Y'all not being transparent to one another. Right. Come on. Verse 3. Verse, verse 3. One man beareth hatred against another. Uh-huh. And doth he seek pardon from the, pardon from the Lord? Uh-huh. He showed no mercy to a man. You say he showed no mercy to the man. Come on. Which is like himself. Which is like himself. So just imagine, put that in the, in the perspective of your wife. Y'all won what? We won flesh. Right. We were one flesh. But then again, it says, he showed no mercy to man. To a man. Just like y'all, some of y'all do. Y'all show no mercy to y'all, y'all spouse. None. That's why the scripture said in 20, uh, Sirach, matter of fact, get Sirach 9 and 1. I think that's it. Sirach 9 or Sirach 12? I have a uh, hold of grudge, I guess. Uh, teach not your wife a leave lesson. Okay. I think it's, is it 9 and 1 or 12 and 1? Yeah. 9, nine and 1? One. Get that right quick. The book of Sirach, chapter 9, verse 1. Uh-huh. Be not jealous over the wife of thy bosom. Come on. And teach her not an evil lesson. Not a what? An evil lesson. Some of you brothers be teaching your wife an evil lesson. <laughs> y'all be talking crazy. Y'all be doing all types of manner of evil. And guess what? Or you're not forgiving. You just brute. You just you just mean spirited to your wife. But guess what? When it comes back on you, you trying to get yourself together. You trying to get everything put back in place. And she, that, oh, that nigga woman is out now. Right. You brought it out. <laughs> right. You taught her. You you brought that nigga woman out. Right. So now you got to deal with that. Don't come running to us. You created that monster. Now you got to deal with it. You got to deal with it. All right. This is why we need to show mercy to one another. All right. Read on. Verse um, verse four. Sirach twenty eight. Sirach 28, chapter, uh, verse 28, chapter, ah. verse tw- chapter 28, verse 4. Verse 4. Uh-huh. He showed no mercy to a man which is like, him, like himself. Uh-huh. And doth he ask forgiveness of his own sins? But he asked forgiveness of his own sins. But you can't show mercy or forgiveness to somebody just like you. Right? Like you, like you perfect. Come on. Verse 5. If he that is, is but flesh nourish hatred, uh-huh. who will entreat for pardon of his sins? Come on. Remember the end. Remember the end. Come on. And let enmity cease. Remember, you can't have no hatred and get to the kingdom of heaven at all. No hatred. Come on. Remember corruption and death uh-huh. and abide in the commandments. And abide in the commandments. Come on. Remember the commandments. And bear no malice to thy neighbor. Remember the commandments and bear no malice to thy neighbor. All right? We have to learn how to show mercy and forgive each other, especially in our marriages. Come on. Remember the covenant of the highest Uh and wink at ignorance. Because some stuff, you just need to learn how to pick your battles. Some stuff you can wink at ignorance, but some of y'all are so damn proud that you got to respond to every little thing that happens. Oh, I'm going to deal with her. I'm, when I get home, I'm going to deal with that. And it be something simple as hell. Right. Sometimes you got to weak at ignorance. Sometimes the stuff y'all be arguing over be stupid. But guess what? It caused a huge disruption in your marriage. Y'all, like I said, you take years off your marriage because y'all don't want to get it right. Rendering evil for evil, railing for railing, no mercy, no forgiveness for each other. But then again, y'all go around, y'all come to the Sabbath like everything is cool. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. Oh, the brother got the strongest shalom. He busts your knuckles up. I'm good. My household is cool until you get home. Y'all back fighting again like y'all just come, didn't come from the Sabbath. You an issue. You a hindrance to your own marriage. Both of y'all. Give me um, give me Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. We're going to wrap it up. Ephesians 4, 
and 32. Ephesians 4 and 32. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 32. Uh-huh. And, and be ye kind one to another. Be what? Kind one to another. Be ye kind one to another. All right? We got to be kind to one another, preferring one another. That's what we got to do, especially when it comes to our spouse and our marriage relationship. Be kindly affectionate one to another. Come on. Tenderhearted. Uh-huh. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. That is a commandment to forgive. Some of y'all be holding grudges towards y'all spouse. Shit that be happening years ago. Three or four years ago, and you still bring it up when y'all arguing. You still bringing up old stuff. You can't get the old stuff out your mind. You think he one-upped you. Or you think she one-upped you. And you can't even, you can't, you can't get it out of your mind. And it's causing you in your relationship to go any further. Because you don't know how to forgive. You don't know how to forget and leave stuff alone and move forward. And this is why y'all have a lot of problems in y'all marriage and relationships. Period. Some of y'all friendships suck. What did Bishop call it? Friendship. So that's why y'all got it. Because y'all don't know how to forgive. Y'all don't know how to deal with nobody. Right. Come on. Is that it? No. Um, even as even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. This is, uh, even have God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven us. Now, Mark 11, 24. Mark chapter 11, the 24th verse. The book of Mark. Chapter 11, verse 20, 24. Uh-huh. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them, uh -huh. and ye shall have them. So pray for what you want. Pray for what you want to receive. All right, and you'll have it. But come on. And when you and when you stand praying, forgive. You got to forgive those that have wronged you. Forgive them. Forgive because forgiveness will release a lot of that hatred that you have built up. All right, come on. If you have aught against any. But if you have aught against any, come on. That your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespass. Because if you can forgive others, the Most High God will forgive you for the things that you've done. What we've done to the Father is way much worse than you've done to your spouse. All right? So if the Most High God can forgive us for the things that we've done, you should be able to forgive your spouse for what that person have done. Come on. Verse 26. But but, you, go ahead. But if you do not forgive. It said, but, but if you do not forgive. Come on. Neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespass. The Most High God ain't going to forgive you for your sins. Because you don't know how to forgive the people that you see every day. But you expect the Most High God to forgive you. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. I pray somebody get something out of this class, man. I pray I step and stomp and run over so many toes when it comes to this marriage thing that you try to figure it out, that you, you actually try. Because, listen, some of y'all, y'all be your own y'all be your own hindrance to your own relationship. Y'all destroy it. On, it's like it's on purpose. Y'all, listen, y'all got to learn how to talk with each other and deal with each other. Stop holding that dang grudge. Let's get to that, matter of fact, before we go. Uh, give me James 5. James 5 and 9. Gotcha. It's the book of James, chapter 5, verse 9. Come on. Grudge not one against another. Uh huh. Brethren, Least ye be condemned, behold, the judge standeth before the door. It says, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. We, must, we don't need to be holding any type of grudge towards one another at all. Let it go. Let it go, man. Get rid of that stuff. Move forward so you can grow. Right. Stop keeping that hatred in you. Stop doing that. 
The reason why y'all ain't like y'all were when y'all first met is because you screwing it up. You can't forgive. Right. Woman and man up. Forgive your spouse and move forward so we can continue to compel the people in to be examples to the world so we can take our behinds home. Hey, Karen. What's up? Here it is. Your life partner mm -hmm. needs help. They have a problem. They have an addiction. Or they, 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 they're going through it and they need your help. But you don't want to help mm -hmm. because you have that grudge. Yep. You don't want to deal with them. But they're dying. Are they in the fire? And the spouse and, don't even see it. It, it won't see it because you're not sober-minded. You're not discerning the time when you need to be like, okay, this is it. I have to help my partner be better. Both of, both of you, you have to be better. You have to be together in order to be better. Like the scripture says, your prayers are going to be hindered. Here it is, you're praying for a, a better job, and then this person is praying that you lose your job. Mm -hmm. That don't work. It doesn't work like that. You have to be on one page. Right. On one accord. All right. Give me a, let me see. A, give me, give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 16. That's the reason why I'm going here. And then we don't get into the last two scriptures. Ecclesiastes 7 and 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, and, verse 16. And this be some of y'all's problem right here, bro. Go ahead. Be not righteous over much. Be not righteous over much. Come on. Neither make thyself over wise. Some of y'all think y'all so damn smart that y'all got it figured out. Can't nobody tell you nothing. But you the one going through pure hell. Right. That is a problem. That is a problem. Y'all don't want to hear nothing. Like I said before, you come to us with counsel. We give it. We show, give you advice. Or at the end of the day, y'all grown. Y'all going to do what y'all want to do. So we ain't going to tell you exactly what to do. We're going to give you advice of what we think that can work. It's up to y'all to take that and apply it to your relationship. Right. But if you think you know more than us, don't come to us for no damn counsel. You got it all figured out. Right? One, two year in marriage, and you got it figured all the way out, but you're having problems and you need help. Don't be that person to where you think that you can't be told what to do or you can't be told uh, any advice to help your situation out. You're talking about we get our, own, our dang time for, for our people to give counsel and give, and give advice to our people. Right. We take time out of our family and all of that stuff, and we love it. But if you're going to do it, apply it. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to do what I do anyway. Most of y'all do that. Y'all call, call counsel to see if, just to be listening to some scriptures. And the next thing you know, what happened? You don't even go, you don't even do it. You do the exact opposite. Like I said one time, I'm going to start telling y'all the wrong thing so y'all do the right thing. Because <laughs> some of y'all hold backwards like that. Y'all be backwards as hell. That's a problem. Right. Give me, uh, all right, give me. Uh, Tobit, matter of fact, where we at now? Give me Proverbs uh, 11 and 14. Proverbs 11 and 14 and give me Tobit 4 and 18. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Uh-huh. Verse 14. Come on. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Uh-huh. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. It said where there's no counsel, where, the, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. We have counselors for a reason. All right? We have people with understanding. They got more experience than us. It ain't, it ain't got nothing to do with age. It's the experiences that you've been through. The understanding you have on, on certain things. We get counsel, right? When you don't seek counsel, you start to go in your own mind and thinking that you can, you can, you can solve everything. But you're the same person that have all these issues right. that you can't get over yourself. You got to utilize and use the counsel that's given. Find somebody that's going to be 1,000 with you. You need somebody to be a thou wow with you, bro. Real talk. You sisters too. 
Don't pacify these, don't pacify these sisters. They need to hear the raw and uncut too. Sister, you bugging. Right. You tripping. You need to get your you need to get your household in order. You need to reverence your husband. You need to show him more affection. That's what needs, that's what you sisters need to be telling these sisters if you counsel them. You need to get your stuff together. And brothers, you know y'all get the raw. All right? You it's it's very important to get counsel. All right? Throughout way all throughout the Bible, when people get counsel, things worked out for them. When they don't, when they go on their own mind, it goes bad for them. Give me Tobit 4. Tobit chapter 4, verse 18. The book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 18. Come on. As counsel of all uh-huh. that are wise, uh-huh. and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Don't despise counsel that is going to be profitable for you. All right? No matter how hard, how much the counsel might be hurt or what you hear, you might not think you agree with it, but it's going to help your relationship. You got to try. If you don't apply, you don't know if it's going to work. Some of y'all be in your own damn mind. Y'all want us to be on your side when you come to us. Because, oh, oh, my husband, this, this, and that. You need to be on my side and dog him out. No, you part of the problem, too. Period. You doing some evil wickedness, too. Both of y'all need help. All right? Y'all have to take counsel, man, especially when it's profitable to you. Stop playing games. Stop playing games when it comes to marriage, man. Because a lot of a lot of stuff can be destroyed because brothers and sisters don't know how to get around. Spouses don't know how to get along with each other. And then the kids see it. And then other people in the body sees the, the tension between y'all two. Let's get over it. Forgive your spouse, man. Move forward. It ain't worth it to be dwelling over old stuff, man. Move forward. Have fun. This is your life partner. Right. Y'all going to be freaking bitter towards each other forever? I'm going to be bitter till I can try to make it to the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with y'all? All right? Give me a, what's it, Hebrews 2 and 1? Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. I'm still digging out the scripture. <laughs> Hebrews 2 and 1. <clears throat> now, listen, I'm telling you, man, y'all got y'all to gotta, y'all gotta wake up. Y'all have to wake up when it comes to your marriage, man. Really sit down and speak and talk, communicate with your spouse. It don't have to be a damn argument. And sometimes you need to admit your faults. Right. Admit what you do wrong. Some of y'all be walking into these relationships as if you don't have no issues, and that's a damn lie. When you say, I ain't got no problem, that let you know, that let me know that you got all the problems. Because you don't even see yours. Right. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Book of Hebrews, chapter 2, verse 1. Uh huh. Therefore, we ought to give the most earnest heed to the things which we have heard. This lest at any time we should let them slip. I pray that y'all can get something from this class. The reason why I did is because I know it's a little lengthy, but I did this class because I've been seeing it a lot lately. You gotta learn how to forgive, especially in marriages. Y'all gotta learn how to forgive each other when it comes to marriage. You gotta learn how to forgive each other when it comes to friendships. Forgive, man, and move forward because it's a burden on you. It's a burden on your soul. And you having all these problems, man. Move forward. Move on. We got the kingdom to uphold, man. I ain't trying to live it bitter. Right. I'm trying to have a little fun. Keep it the commandments. You know, and dwell with my wife. I want to have fun. You know what I'm saying? So make sure y'all can learn something from this, all right? So with that, my name is Captain Palu. To my right. Officer Daniela. And that is another episode with 15 minutes with the Captain Shalom. Most high Christ bless you all. Shalom. Most high Christ bless. Shalom. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.